Good morning, good morning. It is a brand new, <clears throat> a brand new morning, guys. Monday, July the 20th of 2020. Whew. Another gracious day that we have been allowed to see. Another great weekend that we have completed. Can't get that weekend back. Cannot, absolutely cannot get that weekend back. But I tell you, God has brought us to this moment and we ought to celebrate Every moment, we ought to celebrate every moment uh, that he's enabled us to breathe, to take in his air, to be able to be here. Every moment is a celebration. Every single moment is a celebration. And if we live our lives that way, imagine where we would be as a nation of people around the world. And so, again, I, I just, I'm extremely humbled, extremely honored uh, to be here on this morning for those who catch this live or the replay. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a little bit of a hashtag moment. Right now, we're live on Facebook, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as the LeadershipTKOStation.com's website. And so welcome everyone to this session, the virtual Bible study. And I'm going to definitely type that in right now. I'm going to say every minute is worth Man, that's good. Thank you, God. Every minute is worth celebrating. Come on now. I got to go ahead and uh, type that in. Here we go. Powerful, 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 powerful. And so again, I welcome you all here. Thank you so very much for being here. I'm going to go ahead as I know Facebook is allowing people to know that I'm live. I'm going to go ahead and um, share this thing out to a few places, definitely on one of my pages and possibly a group. So I'm going to go ahead and share this right now. So hopefully we should be good to go. Let's see if I can get it to share, share, need some more, need some more space. <laughs> there we go. I see it now. All right. Uh, wonderful. Wonderful. And I'm hoping each and every one of you are doing great. And I'm just feeling good this morning. Feeling good this morning. Okay, so I shared it one place. I'm going to share it one more place. Okay. All right. Share it, share it, share it, share it. Matter of fact, I'm going to share it to a group. So let me go ahead and find the group that I want to share this to. There we go. All right, sharing it to a group. Might share it to one more group. The group that came to mind, it's in my mind just now. I so, said, you know what, Let, let's go ahead and share it. So I'm going to share it to one more group. Just one more. Okay, let's see if I can find the group on here. Okay, here we go. I see the group. I'm going to post it. Perfect. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, Joanna Lewis. How are you? How are you? Are you still in the UK? Is that where you are? It's been a while since you've been here. Listen, and started a watch party, too. Let's go, sis. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's share this thing. All right, again, welcome, guys. You know, this virtual Bible study, we do this to help you to win from the inside out. The inside out. We're dealing with the heart. We're dealing with the mind. You know, these important areas, I'm telling you, these are the areas you, you know, people can't see, but they only can see it by what you express, like your behavior, your words, like what they hear and what they see. That's what they, you know, how you can tell whether a person is truly winning or not. And um, when I use the word win, I'm comparing it to victory. I'm comparing it to being aligned with the will of the Father. That's what I'm comparing winning to, okay? Because it's not necessarily what happens uh, in a moment or what happens, you know, temporarily that, that really truly matters. I'm going to say this. What really matters is what we do that lasts for eternity, decisions that we make today that impacts our eternity. You know, that's what I consider, you know, winning, winning. And so with the virtual Bible study, this started definitely a, over a year ago. 
uh, and just doing Bible studies on social media, allowing you all to be a part. You know, you, you all are encouraged to definitely have your one-on-one -on -one time with God. Uh, but when you come together and are able to fellowship with individuals, especially if you're able to do it in person, but we know with all that's going on, I know a lot of in-person fellowshipping when it comes to the word may not be happening, but at least we can do it virtually. We can get together virtually. We can connect and discuss the word of God concepts pertaining to the word of God uh, on the computer and in other platforms. So again, I welcome you here. This happens Monday through Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so there are a few ways. I do want to share there are a few ways for you all to participate, even though this is an audio stream, okay, an audio stream. Uh, so one way to, to really engage is to hit that love button. Like if you know the word of God can change lives, can draw you closer to God, hit that, hit that love button. Hit that love button if you know the word of God can change lives, including yours. Hit the love button for me. Go ahead and hit that love button. Yeah, I know you see it. Hit the love button right down there. All right. Also, also, we secondly, look, we got the comments feature. We can interact with one another. We can say good morning, golden morning. We can say super morning, whatever it is that you want to say uh, below. Good morning, Brother Wendell. Great to see you. Now, the only reason why I may be quote, actually uh, greeting certain individuals is I see your comments below. Good morning, Carolyn Stevens. Great to have you here as well. Listen, listen, the other feature that I love the most is the share feature. Woo! This share fee, I'm telling you, Joanna got me um, fired up. <laughs> Joanna got me fired up. She did a watch party. I didn't even have to say, go ahead. And sh she did a watch party all on her own. So I'm extremely excited about that. You know, truth of the matter is I was fired up before I came on the stream. I was fired up. Okay. And, and so thank you so much, Carolyn. I see you with the watch party started. Good morning, Miss Pat. Hey, Miss Pat, Miss Pat, I'm telling you, she will, Miss Pat will be there. She would be with you through the thick and the thin. I'm telling you, she will be present. And so, Miss Pat, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we appreciate you. All right, look, I'm excited. Do your watch parties. Do your watch parties. Let people know about the gospel. We can, you know, people talk about all types of things on social media, but the best thing to talk about, the best, the best type of you know, word to share is the gospel message. You want to spread a message, spread the gospel message. Okay, let's do that. All right. So those are a few ways to participate. Now, I do want to give a little bit of an overview. I know some people like to know what we're going to talk about. And it's really easy to get if you look in the description area of the stream. Okay, look in the description area of the stream. You will see it right there. We get on the platform. We go over basic Things, you know, that we're going to follow, a little household rules, not anything major, uh, but just words of encouragement there. And then we dive into prayer, have to pray to make sure we're aligned uh, with the Most High. OK, uh, after prayer, we then go into part one, which involves reading a portion of the New Testament and studying it, seeking how we can apply it to our lives. I know today we're focusing in on Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 21. OK, 14 through 21. Uh, after we study and assess that and pull out some important concepts, we're going to transition and really continue our discussion on Seventh Day Adventists. Many of you probably seen or have been a part of some of our sessions. We've been we've been really seeking to understand certain groups and the way they think, like why they think the way they think. How did some of these groups come about? like um, Hinduism and Buddhism and the Nation of Islam, like how did some of these groups come about? Like what inspired or sparked uh, the start of these particular groups and how, we, how can we go about witnessing to them? How can we go about sharing the gospel message with them? Uh, one thing that I've shared is that, you know, I love Stephen Covey's concept, you know, seeking first to understand, then to be understood, right? Seek first to understand, in other words, understand how people think, why they think the way they think, and then you can potentially be understood. They can understand you. They can't understand you if you're not seeking to understand them. And so it's just like that give and take type of thing. Yeah. 
And so that's what I, I truly believe. And so this is why we, t- we really discuss and seek to understand certain groups. It's not meaning to try to encourage you to think one way or the other, but to have a stronger stance on why you believe the way that you believe. Okay. And why we believe the, what, we, what we believe. Okay. And so we're going to talk, we're going to really discuss Seventh-day Adventists. We're going to review that towards the end, summarize everything, and then we're going to pray so that we can be dismissed. So that is the flow of what we're going to cover on today during the virtual Bible study. Okay, so at this particular time, let's pray so we can get started. So Father in heaven, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you, Father God. This truly, truly, truly is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and we will be glad. God, we thank you so very much for last night and and early this morning of how you've enabled us to, to receive rest in our bodies. We thank you for how we rose up today and how we're continuing to breathe in your air. We're understanding that everything belongs to you and we're grateful for you enabling us to manage all that we have right now. We thank you so much for the ability to come directly to your throne of grace, Father. We thank you so much for this opportunity to use technology to come together to discuss the word of God, to gain even greater understanding of the word. So, Father, we're just asking that you would forgive us of all sin, cleanse our hearts and our minds, of everything that's not of you. Guide us, direct us into all truth. Father, we're just asking that you would bless us this morning with knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Help us to rightly divide your word and to be able to boldly, to go out there to share this word with others, to be a source of hope and inspiration for others. And so, God, we thank you for this moment, this time, this session. And we just ask that you would be in the midst, that you would get the glory out of it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. So welcome once again, everybody. If you have anyone that's new, that's tuning into the virtual Bible study, welcome aboard. Good morning to my sister, Jamario. Good morning, sis. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Starting at verse number 14. Now, listen, if for any reason, like you weren't here during the previous sessions, there is a link and I'm going to copy that link. I'm going to post the link in the comments area. Um, It's a support area where we put the links for our previous sessions. Right. That way you can go back and listen to it. If you ever want to hear our discussion about the nation of Islam or the or Hinduism, or Buddhism, or Jehovah Witnesses. We spoke about them as well to gain understanding. And so go back and listen to those replays, and you'll see there's a document with links, and each of the documents is based upon each month. So we started uh, posting the replay links starting in the month of May. So anything before May, you're probably going to have to visit um, leadershiptkostation.com. And look for the player and scroll up, you know, or you can search here on my timeline for previous links. That's going to be a lot of searching, (laughs) but you'll be able to look that way as well. Okay. So I'm going to pin this comment here. That way you'll be able to see the link. Awesome. Awesome, guys. All right. So let's go ahead and start again. We're continuing in Romans chapter 10. We're going to be starting at verse 14. And it reads as follows. And remember, this is Paul. He wrote a letter to the people of Rome. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, indeed. 
Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. But I say, did Israel not know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation, and I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, whew, heavy stuff, guys, heavy stuff. Let's, let's talk about it for a moment because it, even at the beginning of this, you know, you know, his main point when he gets into these questions, Paul, because even the previous, the previous verses, the first 13 verses of this chapter, please understand, he speaks of how Israel, God's chosen people, right? At the very beginning, he gave the law to this people, to this nation, how Israel needs the gospel. Okay, how Israel needs the gospel. And then he begins here, you see his main point in going over this series of questions, you know, is that a clear, it's a really a clear presentation of the gospel message. You know, it has to go forward. It has to proceed saving faith, true saving faith. It has to go before that. You see, true faith always has content. You know, the revealed word of God. Salvation comes, okay? Salvation comes to those who hear and believe. You see that? Who hear and believe the facts of the gospel. Okay, the facts of the gospel. Look, if you look, for example, you know, and I love, of course, this part of the verse, in verse 15, where he says, you know, and how, what is it? Uh, let me see, go back. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. You see, this is actually quoted from Isaiah, Isaiah 52, right? It's, it is the message of good news, which those feet carry. That is so welcome. God wants this message of the gospel to go forward. This is why, for example, you know, I inspire watch parties to be done whenever we do these Bible studies, because the gospel of the kingdom of God, it needs to go forward. It must go forward. Okay, it's going to go forward regardless of, you know, but the thing is, you want to be a vessel that God can use so that that message can, can reach more and more people. This is the single most important message that we ought to be sharing. We can share all types of messages and gossip, which are no, we know that we should not be spreading. But how about the gospel of the kingdom of God? When was the last time you shared the inspirational gospel message? I'm not saying, of course, hitting the share button here, which is definitely a way to go. But being able to share the gospel with someone, to lead someone to having a relationship with God. That's what I'm talking about. Let's look at verse 16. He says, Paul says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? You see, understand something. The good news is not only a gracious offer, but it's a command to believe and repent. To believe and repent. And of course, he quotes in this particular verse here, he goes back to Isaiah 53. You see, the report that Isaiah described was the substitutionary death of Christ. That's the report, okay? The good news of the gospel is the report. When he says, whose report shall they believe, right? Look at verse 17, right? Verse 17, he says, so then faith comes by hearing. I love this verse. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, mm. the word of God, this is the render, you see, the preferred rendering here is the word of Christ, which really means the message about Christ, the gospel. You see, a person can be inspired to believe, to believe God when they hear the word of God being preached or taught. Okay. 
and they hear, they truly understand and begin to establish a relationship through the word of God being taught specifically. Look at verse 18, right? Verse 18. Of course, here in this particular verse, you know, he's going back and he's sharing um, Psalms 19 here. Okay, Psalms 19. And he shared this to really show that even David understood that God's revelation of him, okay, God's revel- that, that God's revelation of himself, you know, has reached the entire earth. The entire earth, because he says it, he says, their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. And these last couple verses here, you know, it really points out how, you know, Israel was ignorant of the salvation truth contained in their own scriptures. The scripture that was given to them, okay, they were ignorant, you know, ignorant of the salvation truth, including that the gospel would reach the Gentiles, us, those who are not Jewish, okay? And this was actually promised and shared in Deuteronomy 32 and 21 and spoken of by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 65, okay? He speaks of it. So when he references in verse 19, uh, he says, "I I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation, Listen, those who are not a nation, who is who is the prophet Isaiah speaking of right there? He is speaking of those who are not Jewish. You and I, if you're not Jewish, you're Gentile. Okay, so he's speaking of Gentiles who are not a part of Israel, God's chosen, God's special chosen nation. So that's why he says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. I will move you to anger by a foolish nation. Mm. See, look at verse 21, though, the last verse we read. It says, but to Israel, he says, all day long, I have stretched out my hand to a disobedient and contrary people. A disobedient, we disobedient, the literal sense of the meaning of the word to speak against. You know, as throughout her history, understand Israel once again had contradicted the word of God. You know, this time it was it was the truth of the gospel. They, it, it, their hearts were hardened to the truth, hardened to understanding and wanting to accept the truth. And so that's what we spoke of in these verses here. Paul reveals how Israel, God's original chosen people, rejected the gospel message. But of course, from the very beginning, even in the Old Testament, he shares how, you know. He was creating, in a sense, the church and how the message is for anyone who chooses to believe. Anyone who desires to believe. Okay, anyone. And so hopefully you all have gleaned much from, you know, these verses here. Let me know what God has revealed to you, has shared with you as we studied this. I would love to hear your thoughts uh, and, or at least read your thoughts in the comment section. Okay. Definitely, definitely, um, you know, go ahead and do that, <laughs> okay? Um, what I'm thinking about is um, pretty soon, I haven't made a decision yet. I know I may have mentioned this before, guys, but I'm thinking about taking this to Zoom, whereby, you know, we can hear your interpretation, your thoughts. I know we may do it for an extended period of time more, um, so there's something that I'm thinking about. Now, it might not be video-based, but at least people will be able to hear our interactions with one another. Um, and therefore, like the audio portion of it will be open. Now, if you all want to share your video, you can, but I know it's primarily just going to be audio-based. But at least on the Zoom platform, as we stream it potentially uh, on Facebook, you know, you all, your thoughts, your your feedback can be heard. Okay, can be heard. All right, so that's something I'm considering. I haven't I haven't made a final decision just yet, but I'll definitely let you all know. Um, so right now, what I would love to do is transition. Let's transition uh, to going back to our topic of focus, which is Seventh Day Adventist. Seventh Day Adventist. I know last time we were together on Saturday, we spoke of a little bit about the background of it. Um, some important individuals who played an important role in in this whole uh, group you know, being formed, like Hiram Edson, Joseph Bates, and Ellen White. 
Ms. Gogo to Ellen White. Uh, we also begin to uh, just talk about little points, you know, little points here about them and, and even their thoughts about the person of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, we spoke about that as well. But um, there are some other points that I do want to highlight about this, about Seventh-day Adventists that, I, that is definitely worth noting. Um, and, and that is really, you know, where, where do people go? You know, at the end of at the end of this lifetime, when we're when we're passed on from this earth, where do people go? You know, Seventh Day Adventists they may have a different slant, a different perspective on things, and I want to share that, and and some other um, concepts I'm going to elaborate on based on what they believe. Okay, based on what they believe. So, in contrast to historic Christian teaching, okay, Seventh Day Adventism. They hold that the soul represents the whole man and the whole man or the body remains in the tomb until the resurrection morning. Um, they you know the soul cannot, you know, exist apart from the body, though, you know, and there is no conscious existence after death. The righteous will be resurrected and caught up to meet the Lord at his return. The unrighteous will be resurrected after the millennium, and then cast into the lake of fire where they will be annihilated. This is their thoughts, okay? This is their thoughts. Another point that I really want to make about Seventh-day Adventists is that they teach that the Seventh-day Sabbath, or I should say Friday, from Friday evening until Saturday evening, was instituted by God. And that observance of this day is a test of one's of a person's loyalty to Christ. You see, a counterfeit, if you hear me correctly, a counterfeit Sabbath will be proclaimed during the tribulation period. This is their thoughts. Those who worship on that day will receive the mark of the beast. And those who remain faithful to God will continue to worship on the Sabbath. Okay? These are just their thoughts regarding the Sabbath. Now, there's some other things that I, I found to be very, very interesting. All right. Uh, we can see a stark contrast, you know, to, you know, historic Christian doctrine and Seventh-day Adventist teachings, you know, and some, some other major points as well. For example, here's one point. You know, they believe that Jesus entered into the heavenly sanctuary in 1844 to begin a second phase of his ministry. That's what they that's what they purport or really put out there. They also say that the sins of believers have been transferred to or I should say deposited or recorded in the heavenly sanctuary and are now being dealt with in the investigative judgment. Uh, those who have died are examined uh, to determine if they are worthy of being a part of the first resurrection. You know, the living, those who are still living, are also examined to determine those who are abiding and keeping God's commandments. Now, when the cases of all the righteous have been decided, okay, their sins will be blotted out and Jesus will return to this earth in all his glory. Now, the another point uh, that they really, really put out there to others is and okay, just bear with me a little bit. This is something that I, I learned from um, Dr. James, this is a man by the name of Dr. James uh, Jornstad. Jornstad, he is definitely a student of Seventh-day Adventism, okay? And he says something about Azazel. Azazel, now I'm going to tell you what that is. It's, it's quote-unquote the goat, the high priest sent out into the wilderness. So it's a goat. Okay, just bear with me a little bit. Azazel designates Satan, and Satan will ultimately have to bear the retributive punishment for his responsibility in the sins of all men, both righteous and wicked. So, yeah, and it, and it doesn't stop there. I do have a couple other points that I, I do want to share. Uh, they have their thoughts, though, also about the law grace and salvation they have their their own thoughts pertaining to that and, I, and i'm going to share just a little bit 
you know, now finally, we are going to see a difference in Dockery when we, when we examine, for example, we look at two perspectives of law, grace, and salvation. You see, on the one hand, we see justification by faith, okay, justification by faith alone, right? By faith alone. Now, opposed to that, we find justification by faith, which is demonstrated by obedience to God's commandments. Now, this view strongly advocates Sabbath keeping, you know, in the Old Testament dietary laws, which is difficult to harm, to really harmonize with Seventh-day Adventist assurance that salvation is by grace through faith and not of works, okay, not of works, all right? So that's just something I, I really wanted to point out there. Now, how do we share the truth? How do we go about sharing the truth with Seventh-day Adventists? This is where it, it gets very important to understand. How do we share the truth with them? All right. Well, you see, our concern is to be sure that individual Adventists, right, Seventh-day Adventists, they're confronted with the one true gospel. The one true gospel. You see, if an Adventist will admit that, for example, you know, their leader, you know, the one leader, Ellen White, was, you know, it was fallible that no record in heaven could possibly bring a believer, you know, into condemnation. And that the works of the law, such as like Sabbath keeping, are not necessary conditions of salvation. OK, if we can, if, if an Adventist will admit this point right here, you know, then the other things being equal you know, that person should be acknowledged as an evangel, as really, really being faulty. You know, on the other hand, though, if the Adventist persists in defending, you know, Mrs. White infallibility, you know, if, she, if the Adventist continues to def defend the investigative judgment and the Old Testament dietary laws, if the, if that person continues to defend these things, you know, he or she places himself under the curse of the law, right? Under the curse of the law and is preaching another gospel, which the word of God says a person should not do, should not preach. If another, if a person preaches another gospel, do not, do not adhere to it. Okay. You see, in response, in response to those who are, to those who believe, you know, faith must be demonstrated by obedience to God's commandment. Okay, this is the response. Number one, you have to stress the biblical teaching that a man is justified by faith in Jesus apart from the deeds of the law. Apart from the deeds of the law. If you need scripture to kind of back that up, you can always reference Romans 3 and 28, right? That's a number, that's one of them. There's many others, but I, I got Romans 3, 28. I have, even in Romans 4 and 6, Okay, Romans 4 and 6. You also have Galatians. You go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. 10 through 14. So again, stress, you know, the biblical teaching that man, again, man is not justified by, by faith in Jesus. I mean, they are justified by faith in Jesus, but it's really apart from the law. It's apart from trying to keep the law. You cannot, that's not the case. You also want to really point out that the law of Moses, right, like the ceremonial and moral aspects of it, has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, like the ceremonial part and the moral aspect have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. You see, by his perfect life, Jesus met all of the requirements, you know, of the moral aspect of the law. He met the moral aspects of it, and, you know, and then by his death, he fulfilled all of the ceremonial ordinances, which, you know, prefigured really his incarnation and his sacrifice. Hopefully you understand this. Let me repeat that one more time. You see his perfect life, right, that he had, that he led, it helped to help us to really meet all the requirements for the moral aspect of the law. But then when it comes to his death, you know, his death, he actually fulfilled all of the ceremonial ordinances that were put in place in the Old Testament. He fulfilled it. 
And of course, if you want scripture regarding the latter, regarding him fulfilling the ceremonial ordinances, you can go to Romans 5 and 10. You can also see, you know, this in Col Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17. And I know I'm going kind of fast, but I want to make sure that I share this important content with you. Okay. All right. Another point that I want to make when it comes to witnessing to Seventh-day Adventists, okay, is that the law or commandment that Christians, that we are called upon to follow is the law of love. That is, that is it, <laughs> right? The law of love, okay? The Bible speaks of it a lot, but if you need scripture, again, you can look at Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. 37 through 40. Okay, there's others, there's others, but I'm going to stop there. So to those who believe the Sabbath uh, is binding on the believer, the Christian, you know, it, you know, to those who believe the Sabbath is something that we have to hold on to, that we must adhere to, you know, you might want to point out a couple of things. Number one, Constantine did not, as, as some Adventists, some Adventists claim, he did not change the day of worship from Saturday to, okay, from Saturday to Sunday. He enacted that the first day of the week should be a public holiday. But centuries before Constantine, you see, believers gathered together for worship on the first day of the week. Reference, reference to worship on the first day of the week can be found in Acts. I'm going to Acts chapter 2, verse 41. You can also go to, man, there's a lot that I have here. I'm try not to, uh, I'm going to try to say them relatively quickly, so bear with me. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. You got Acts chapter 20, verses 6 and 7, right? Another one that I want to share with you is also Revelation 1 and 10, chapter 1, verse 10, okay? Now, in addition, in addition, references to worship on the first day of the week can be found even in the writings of the early church fathers, the early church fathers. And so, you know, you have that. Now, another point is that there is no, okay, there is no indication in the New Testament that the observance of the Sabbath was binding on Gentile believers. You, hopefully you get in this. Again, there's no indication in the New Testament that the observance of the Sabbath was binding on Gentile or non-Jewish believers. But on the contrary, though, you know, we find words like, like this, you know, one man regards one day above another, another regards every day alike. Let each man be fully convinced in his own mind, right? He who observes the day observes it for the Lord. He who observes the day observes it for the Lord. You can find that in Romans 14, 5 and 6. If, if, if anyone ever tells you you're supposed to worship on this day, you can always go back and reference Romans 14, verses 5 and 6. Okay? And also, the Word of God also says, therefore, let no one act as, a, as your judge. Again, let no one act as your judge in regard to Okay, and of course it leads to talking about a Sabbath day. You can find this in Colossians 2 and 16. Colossians 2 and 16. All right, and, I, and I find it better to give you scripture just in case when you, you know when you have a discussion with someone who may be a Seventh day Adventist, you can reference scripture. Okay, you can definitely reference scripture. So that's what I have. That's what I have for you on today. And I'll leave you with this verse, Ephesians 1 and 7. Ephesians 1 and 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It's because of his grace, not because of, you know, things that we try to adhere to, laws and ceremonial customs and they, no, it's not because of all of that. You know, when, when we have all of these restrict, when we have all these additional elements added, you place more burden on people. And, and that's what happens when all of these different groups are created. More burdens are placed upon people to have to follow. So then, of course, you ask yourself the question, is it truly liberating? Is it truly freeing when you have all these added burdens and requirements? Right? No. No, absolutely not. So that's what I have for you guys. Hopefully, you know, this has helped you when it comes to understanding a little about Seventh-day Adventists and then also how to go about witnessing and sharing uh, the gospel message to them. All right. Again, hopefully you all have, you know, taken hold of this. OK. And so what I am going to do is, is, listen, tomorrow we're actually going to go into talking about a new topic for some. And it's the new age movement. OK, this is uh, it's really, really taking a hold of many. It's, it's man centered. Um, and if you're not careful, you know. It can it can grip many people. And you'll find this philosophy of the new age movement in many places. Okay, in many places. So stay tuned because um I'll definitely be sharing information about this new age movement. Um you know and and, and what it really involves, what it truly really involves, and so that you'll gain understanding and also, you know, how to go about um being a being a, a beacon of light for them. OK, that may share in those beliefs. Now, of course, a little later on during this week, we're also going to talk about the will of God. We're going to talk about what uh, what many believe to be the our most valuable commodity. OK, these are just some topics we're going to focus in on. OK, as we move throughout this week. But definitely, guys, look, go back and, you know, click on the link there to join the support area. If you've missed any previous sessions, uh, for those of you who have been uh, plugging in, definitely go ahead, share this out with other people. Um, and let's be a blessing. It's all about being a light in this world, uh, salt upon the very earth. You know, being at that, that vessel uh, that God can use to share the good news. Okay, to share the good news. Um, and so thank you so very much for plugging in. What we're going to do at this time is we're going to take a moment to pray. And then we're going to be dismissed. Okay, we're going to be dismissed. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this day, this moment. We thank you so very much, God, for enabling us to come together and using technology, the internet, to come together in such a way to gain more understanding about your ultimate purpose, your will gain an understanding about how the message of the gospel, you know, was meant for all who desired to believe. And we thank you so much, God, for allowing us to be a part of your plan. And so help us, Father God, even as we study different groups to gain an understanding of why they believe the way they believe. Father, give us the words we, we are to say when interacting with different people. And we just pray that you would give us the words that you would speak through us, that we would share, that we would encourage and inspire with love, but that we would speak from a foundation of truth, a foundation of your truth, biblical truth. And so, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. And we just ask it as we go forward today that you would be with us, that, Father, you would protect us as we go to and fro. If we have to travel out, that you would be with us and keep us. And we're just asking, Lord, for new relationships to be formed. Father, for those struggling with burdens and for, you know, anything that's, that's, that, that's, that there's, it's keeping them in a state of being bound, we're just praying for them to be free. Father, we just ask that you would touch the heart and the mind of that person who desires a relationship with you. For you said in your word that 
if you, a person believes with their heart that Jesus is Lord and that they confess with their mouths that you father have raised them from the raised him from the from the dead from the grave that they too shall be saved and so God we thank you for those who choose to believe and confess and I just pray that you would come into their hearts that you would make a home with them that they would establish a relationship with you and so God we thank you we love you and we just ask that you would continue to get the glory out of these sessions like this and even in our individual lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being a part of the virtual Bible study on today. I'm telling you, it's an already amazing day, and I know it's going to get even better from this point on. So see you all, or at least I'll be sharing some more information with you all on tomorrow morning. And remember, as I always share, I love each and every one of you guys. And God loves you all the more. Be blessed and have a great day.